Hey, this is Mike from Canterbad. This is Eric from Blackmore. This is Dan Hodges from Death Valley Driver. This is Matt of Oceans of Rising. You're listening to Heavier Than Heaven. Heavier Than Heaven. The Heavier Than Heaven on CKDU in Halifax. If you're not listening to Heavier Than Heaven, I don't know what the hell you're doing. Turn it up until you can't hear your neighbors complain. Heavier Than Heaven, Halifax's greatest heavy metal show. Hardcore heavy metal for the masses. You have no hope! <laughs> Two hours of the hardest hitting music that you can find anywhere on the radio. Community radio is freedom. <laughs> With your hosts, Danger Zone. Danger Zone. Danger Zone! Danger Zone, yeah! I am the voice! Of the voiceless and project. Project. The king of the north. The king of the north. I am the king of the world. I got something to say. Halifax, your day of reckoning has come. Beware, coward. Welcome to my realm. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, if your children get off the air. <laughs> My name is Danger Zone, and you're on Heavier Than Heaven. I'm coming to you on a more calm fashion because I am loaded with sugar. Mountain Dew, Coca-Cola, Swedish berries. It's all in my system. And also because I'm extremely excited for what we have for you tonight. It's another edition of Heavier Than Heaven here on CKDU 88.1 FM in Halifax on the web, CKDU. .ca. It's Halifax's greatest heavy metal show. What makes it great are the guests that we are privileged to have in our studio tonight. They're a local, born, bred, Halifax heavy metal band for real. This is the kind of local content that I love having on the airwaves, that I love being able to pimp, that I love being able to be a proxy to. For your wonderful listening ears, I invite now to the show... Oh, and Project's here, too. <laughs> He's doing the dutiful... Uh, he's the Roz to my Fraser tonight as we welcome melodic death metal band Inviting End to the show. Hello, gentlemen. Hello. Hey, how's, hey, how's it going? going? There are four of you in here at a time. Let's get them all introduced to you so that you know exactly who we're talking to. First of all, we have Mr. Keenan Carroll. Hey, how's it going? We have Gavin Edwards. Hello. We have Justin Como. Yo. And we have Mark Eisner. Hey, what's up? Four members of Inviting End coming to us from different parts of Halifax, Nova Scotia. Uh, I was asking you earlier what parts of Halifax that you emanate from, because it's not often that I get to talk streets, that I get to talk shop with Halifax bands. So um, let's start with you, Keenan. Where are you hail from, from Halifax? I'm uh, in the north end there, right next to uh, the prime sprout of Brothers Meat Shop. Mm. And the Army Navy store, I got my food, and I got my uh, zombie apocalypse right taken care of right next to me it's perfect awesome uh you know what i always wanted to go down to that surplus store i was hoping to get one of those like heavy duty duty goggles like those like really like night vision goggles for like a costume or something i don't suppose you would know if they have that i don't know if they have any in stock (laughs) (laughs) i'm sure they can get it you can go sam fisher all over that but yeah absolutely mark tell us where you come from oh i'm just uh west end there close to uh helfax shopping center Right, right on. Yeah. Uh, I hear that you're the place to practice at with your garage. The party barn, man. Ooh, Mr. Yeah. Big Man with his party yeah. barn. Right on. Yeah. Kind of s- sometimes cold, it's so, cold, uh, yeah. so I've been told. I find it fine. Like yeah, I, play, I play the drums. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I'm usually uh, drinking. So Nice. Yeah. What are you drinking? Uh, everything. <laughs> Mostly wine, to be honest. I brew my own. That's really interesting because we had another local band on here, and a lot of them were really big on wine, <laughs> to drink wine. And I'll tell you something else. I got the one of the drunkest times I've ever been is a couple weeks ago. My girlfriend's home brewed wine, uh, yeah. home bottled. Holy crap! That'll do it. Yeah, it's brutal, but good. I mean, schlitzed. It was crazy. Uh, Justin, where do you come from? I'm like a pretty close walk to Mark, actually, straight by the Halifax Shopping Center as well. That's a prime location to be like, I'm guessing you take advantage of that all the time. Oh, yeah. Just heading over to Mark's and jamming and stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah. Right on. And uh, Gavin? Uh, I'm somewhat close to there, too, just on Quimple Road, West End. Yeah. Whereabouts on uh, Quimple? So uh, pretty close to the Rotary by the, the uh, Northwest. Gotcha. I have, a fr- yeah. I, have a, I have a friend who lives near there. Kind of the uh, uh, well-to-do neighborhood. 
<laughs> Some, something like that. Yeah. Well, ladies and gentlemen, Inviting End are with us to the bitter end tonight, and you can contact us and talk to them live on the air, sort of. So, first of all, you can go to our Facebook page, facebook.com slash heavier than heaven Halifax, and while you're doing that, please go to facebook.com slash inviting end. There is where you can find all the latest info on this great upcoming band. You can uh, interact with them as well. But if you go to facebook.com slash heavier than heaven Halifax and uh, send us in your questions to inviting end, we've already got a couple in the chamber that we'll get to in a little bit. You can also leave us email heavier than heaven CKDU at gmail.com. And finally, you can call us on the request line 902 494 2487. Now, I don't want to say that I totally know what I'm doing, but there is a chance, there's a chance, that if you call in at the right time, you could get on the air with Inviting End. Remember, keep it clean. I know it's a little weird. It's 10 p.m. on a Saturday night. The last thing you want to do is keep it clean on a heavy metal show. But I got people to answer to, and I'm, on, and I'm high on sugar, so don't <laughs> test me, man. Don't test me. Now, of course, one of the things that we want to do while we're on here is also highlight your uh, latest is it EP? I never know which one to say. Is, Excellent, yeah. I got it right. Yeah. Inviting End's latest EP, Blood Grounds, which is now available on Bandcamp.com. You can go to invitingend.bandcamp.com. You can name your price for this six album or six song EP. I've listened to the whole thing this week, a couple times actually. It's really good. Thank I you. mean, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want to have you guys on here and just blow smoke up your ass if I didn't <laughs> believe what you were putting out. And I definitely like what I'm hearing. So I'm going to be asking you about. The creative process, the the writing process, the all that sort of stuff. But you know, trying to have a little bit of fun with it, like I meant to. <laughs> <laughs> but definitely, we'll be highlighting that as our Canadian content tonight. In fact, let's get it started off right now. The very first track from Blood Grounds is, in fact, the title track, Blood Grounds. Can you guys give us any insight to that one? Um. It's freaking sweet. Uh, <laughs> good, good. Uh, you should you should believe in what you're putting out there. I appreciate that. Yeah, no, it's it's uh, it's a wicked uh, tune. But uh, I guess like, what are you looking for? Like background to like where, where the, the lyrics come from? Hitter. Yeah, it's a heavy hitter. It's uh, I guess it would be like your radio friendly heavy, <laughs> uh, like from the album. Like the rest of them are pretty like you know heavy intense mosh songs mm-hmm. kind of things. But um, yeah, no, this is about uh, basically an epic uh, battle in in the the. Uh, like days of the nights and stuff like that, when people went out to fields and just thousands and hundreds of thousands of people just died in a, in, in in fields and uh, it's their their blood grounds. So they did, Keenan Carroll. So they did. We're gonna play that for you, and then we're gonna get a little bit more into the process. Have some fun with inviting end. Stick around to heavier than heaven for more of inviting end. And now from their EP, here's blood grounds. <laughs> Yeah! 
Blood Grounds is the EP by Inviting End, who just so happened to be our special guest tonight here on Heavier Than Heaven. Remember, you can go to invitingend.bandcamp.com to pick it up, name your price, and you can have all six of these excellent, excellent songs. So, Inviting End, let's start uh, Let's start from the beginning a little bit. Um, what's, what's kind of, you don't have to give exact ages, what's kind of the age skew of you guys? Like, where do you fall into in terms of, like, brackets? Um, for yourself, for yourselves, not like your audience or anything like that. I'm 27. Right on. So, <laughs> <laughs> okay, Gavin's putting it out there, 27, ready to mingle. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> hey, really? Yeah. Uh, I'm 26. All right. Uh, I'm 25. Okay, so kind of 27 moments. Okay, so Mark said 27 for those of you who uh, can't hear. Oh him. yeah, I'm not very close to the mic. So. Keenan, thank you. You're being <laughs> very you. vigilant yeah. with his. Uh, mic placement Great. as i would expect the singer to do so i appreciate it very much yeah, a little so simply. so mid to late 20s all right um you guys would have been growing up around maybe mid 80s something like that so maybe a little bit young to get on the on the ground floor for the big four but nope. uh no <laughs> never beat you can never you're never too young to pop in a slayer album god no good no i like yeah. the way you think yeah never too young for slayer megadeth no <laughs> <laughs> i like it but uh, if one were to go on your Facebook page, facebook.com slash inviting end, you are certainly home to a lot of different influences. I'll name off a couple. We're talking In Flames. We're talking Metallica, Catatonia, Deftones, The Black Dahlia Murder, as I can see from Gavin's really hunky shirt there. Job for a Cowboy, As I Lay Dying, uh, Demu Borgir, and a lot more. So what was kind of the one that started it all for each of you? In Flames. In Flames was the one. In Flames was a huge one, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, not. It seems to be number one, like the first one that you can think of. Yeah, I mean, back when Clayman came out, I think it was two thousand one. That was a huge influence oh. for us. Clayman is yeah. a great yeah. album. I yeah. still listen to it. Yeah, like Absolutely. all the time. So once, once uh, the CKD, we're supposed to have Clayman somewhere here, uh, as says our online database, but it is frequently <laughs> wrong, and I'm frequently angry. It's that and the Airhead soundtrack that they don't have here. That was an awesome movie. I know, right? <laughs> I'm finding like this little subsection of people who play heavy metal who have seen Airheads, and I'm just like, eh, yeah. all right. It's like the one saving no. grace for that. Uh, what's that guy? The guy who acted in the Mummy, um, uh, Brandon Fraser. Brandon Fraser. Yeah. It's like the one thing that like can save him from like. Yeah, I have no respect for him other than that movie. I ain't farting on no snare drum. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Keenan, since we're at you, uh, number one. That was kind of like the first influence that kind of drove you towards metal uh i'd have to say slipknot slipknot yeah the first thing that drove me towards uh, that's the first thing i can remember listening to it was uh grade eight or nine i remember not actually probably grade seven okay actually yeah i was uh going through the halls with my little cd you know walkman the hunk of crap you i know? did that too but my music was way worse than that oh dude i was listening to like the eminem marshall mathers ep and oh. slipknot self-titled and yeah so, so you so you were the kid that i was afraid of in junior high <laughs> <laughs> yeah like, there were people who were there, and I was just not. <laughs> like, I was just discovering, like, butt rock. Like, Nickelback in grade 7, grade 8. I was not there yet, dude. But that's awesome. Like, that seems to be kind of the, time, the, like, the best time to get into that kind of aggressive music. Oh, totally. And, I mean, it, it was them and uh, I think ACDC were probably, like, nice. the first lead into to, to metal for me. That yeah. was your tie back to, like, the old school kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, no, no, Keen, finish your thoughts. Well, I was just going to throw Megadeth in there again, of course, but, yeah. Which Megadeth? Oh, I mean, Killing is my business, and Business is Good is by probably, you know, all, always going to be my favorite, nice. but uh, Rust in Peace is definitely a close <laughs> second. Yeah. I, act I actually, I got asked last year by someone that I was, like, wanted to do an internship for, like, a radio station, uh, earlier this year, sorry, and, like, one of the first things he asked me is, like, okay, let me ask you something. Ride the Lightning or Master of Puppets? And I was like, I've done a good thing by applying here. Rust in peace. <laughs> <laughs> Interesting answer. <laughs> Justin, let me hear it. Uh, I started with Metallica. Like, I mean, a metal pretty much. My metal. man. Like, Children of Bodom was probably, like, my gateway drug to, like, heavier, you know, metal that's just, like, insane. Like, you know, Demu Borger or Behemoth or something like that. Nice. So, yeah. Good stuff. Gavin, you already mentioned In Flames. Were there any other that kind of caught your ear? Um... I mean, I'm a huge Dark Tranquility fan as well. Okay. Those guys, those guys kick ass. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, a lot of Swedish metal, actually. Um, and uh, Fintroll, too. They were a huge influence for me. And uh, Cradle of Filth way back. Right on. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so you guys are around the same age. Did you all go to school together? 
Nope, I'm from Newfoundland originally. Oh, really? Yeah. Me and Gavin went to school together. Yeah. Where? It's in Halifax? Uh, outside. Uh, it was in Gatesbrook. Uh, we, we started, I guess, in grade 7. We were, yeah. Grade 7 onward, we were in the same school. Okay. Yeah. What? We jammed immediately. Yeah. Really yeah. <laughs> play guitar. I play drums. Yeah. It has to, it has to be done. Yeah. <laughs> Anytime you hear the mic squeaking, that's Keenan <laughs> putting it closer to Mark. <laughs> I'm not hiding. I, yeah, I actually met uh, Mark in college, too, and that's how I met Gavin, and we formed a band before called Only After Dusk. Okay. And, uh, where, did, where did you guys go to college? Uh, Compu College. Oh, right on. Yep. Yeah. In in ta- the one in town? Yeah, it was uh, on Dresden there now. Okay, so we did like IT. What? Did, America, okay, yeah. so you guys did you study IT or was there a specific like subject or uh, what can you study at Compu College? I don't really know much outside of the commercials. I probably wouldn't do other than computers there. I think I think they have like business courses and stuff too. But yeah, we were doing just general uh, IT, you know, networking and okay. uh, you know, yeah, server, server stuff, administration. Yeah. Was was that one of the ones where you got the free laptop? No, no, <laughs> that would have been cool. Didn't give us anything. I got a toolkit maybe. <laughs> Damn! I didn't even get that. So, yeah. so Keenan, where do you enter the picture? Being the farthest east in uh, uh, Canada, <laughs> <laughs> being the farthest east in Canada, how do you uh, meet up with these uh, roughnecks from Nova Scotia? Uh, well, I've been here about four years now. Okay, uh, but about five years ago, my little sister moved up here this way, and uh, she made me promise to come up here for her nineteenth birthday, and so I did that, being the good brother, and then I just couldn't leave. And then uh, probably about a year of being here, uh, she was doing apartment hunting, Mm -hmm. and uh, I went with her to check out the apartment, and uh, let alone Gavin holds opens the door, and we didn't know each other at the time, but uh, he shows us the apartment and starts talking. He's like, yeah, so I got this band on the go who's looking for a vocalist, uh, blah, 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 you know. I was Mm -hmm. like, really? I do vocals, and I'm kind of looking for a band at the moment. And uh, he was like, well, if you're serious, here, check this stuff out. And he played uh, uh, the, well, what's known now as the EP, and uh, Mm. played that for me. And I was like, hell yes, I want to in on this. And uh, he's like, well, come to a jam and uh, see how you you fit with the the rest of the buys here. And uh, (laughs) Now the new piece. (laughs) Like, now I hear it. Uh, And, of course, there's one more uh, part of your band, very important. Anna Jakovic? Did I say that right? Uh, did I? I think that's the, close. Yeah. I, I don't. I'm, I'm sorry, Anna. <laughs> <laughs> I apologize as well. I probably should have asked that beforehand. I used to know. <laughs> I used to know. I can pronounce it after she does. <laughs> but uh, anyways, where does Anna come into the picture? Uh, she's our bassist. Mm-hmm. Uh, she's probably the newest member, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah right yeah. after we'd gotten Keenan, we uh, I was talking with a friend, a friend of mine, Andrew, who I wanted to. He played in She Kills, actually, an old Halifax band. Um, but I was asking him if he wanted to jam on bass, but he didn't have the time, so he suggested Anna and uh, jammed with her, and it went great. Okay. Yeah. Right on. Uh, incoming fan question, one that seems to uh, be inviting a little bit of urgency. Uh, <laughs> and this one might be a little bit, go over the heads of some of our listeners a little bit, but uh, let's see. Bring Chris- it on. Christine Elizabeth says, I have a question for inviting end. Why isn't the internet working at Mark Eisner's house right now? Uh, <laughs> I'll, here, uh, the IT guy. Well, uh, I have an interesting setup. Tell us about it. It's probably the wireless AP that I have set up. I don't know. It could be a number of things. Can you troubleshoot Did you further? Try right turning now? it off and turning it back on again. <laughs> <laughs> could <laughs> could this be heavier than heaven's first and maybe not last IT call? What happens when you have two IT guys online? Someone asks you. If you have IT troubles right now, please don't call the show. This is their off night. I'm sure you guys have to deal with that a lot. <laughs> Uh, I mean, while we're on the subject, actually, do you, I mean, do you guys have day jobs? What kind of do you do when you're not in the thick of it with metal? Uh, well, I, I work for Long and McQuaid. Nice. Yeah. The one on the one on uh, that street in Halifax that I can't remember. <laughs> uh, not in Canard, but I'm in our service department. Oh, okay. Yeah. I actually just location. I actually yeah. just went by Long and McQuaid today. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And, uh, I work at uh, Clearwater on the Bedford Highway, just doing IT mm-hmm. for for those guys. Right on. <laughs> Well, first, I'm curious: is there such a thing as not being in the thick of it with metal? Uh, well, when you're when it's immediately a pressing concern. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> Always metal. But no, uh, I'm a filmmaker by trade. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, well, tell me tell me about that a little bit. Uh, well, I went to the uh, Center for Arts and Technology uh, down there in Barrington. Went okay. through that course, and uh, now I'm making a feature film 
uh, called Disciple of Terror. I've been on here with uh, Freddie Weber a couple times on the Most Maple Morning. Yes, uh, I was just lis- I was listening to that this week as well. Right on. That's right, Disciple of Terror featuring uh, Rock Johnson from Chaos Theory. Yes, yeah, I we recall. had Rock Johnson were, in there for a fight were, scene. Yeah, you're filming some... a fight scene. Yeah, yeah. Right on, dude. That's great. How is it coming along? Oh, it's coming along fantastic, yeah. We're about 90% done shooting and uh, hopefully uh, be done in the new year. Fantastic. Yeah. Mark? Slide up. No? <laughs> See, it's like Pavlov's dog. Now he's starting to kind of understand this means I take the microphone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm learning. Um, they'd be terrified to know but, uh, that I'm in a metal band, but I work for the provincial government doing <laughs> IT. And, uh, Taking them down from the inside. <laughs> yeah, it's, they don't know. I, I, some of them know, but most of them don't. Okay. They're mostly older people, but... I'm sure they'd be shocked. They'd be shocked, yeah. <laughs> oh, that nice Mark. <laughs> What's he doing playing all that torture music? <laughs> uh, no, that's one of my neighbors. <laughs> all right, so we're going to continue on with a bit more music and turn it over to Inviting End. Uh, they have an MP3 loaded up with a whole lot of music that has inspired them, continues to inspire them. Uh, Gavin, what are we going to hear from this time around? Uh, right now we've got Job for a Cowboy, The Rising Tide. The Rising Tide. All right, let's get to Job for a Cowboy here on Heavier Than Heaven. We'll be back with inviting end.
You're back on Heavier Than Heaven. We are here live in studio with Haligonian metal band Inviting End. Gavin Edwards, what did we just hear? That was Soil Work, The Living Infinite, Part 1. Sounded great. And we also heard from Job for Cowboy, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, The Rising Tide. Thank you, Keenan Carroll. We are here with four out of five of Inviting End. So we've talked about how you guys kind of came together from uh, different parts of Nova Scotia and Newfoundland. And uh, so let me ask you now... Um, the, the, I mean, the live experience, it's something that I definitely have no say on, so I'm always interested to ask about, you know, what it's like for each one of you to go up on stage and perform. First of all, um, how long have you been performing together? It was uh, the end of November 2012. Oh, so yeah. fa fairly recently. Yeah. Uh, what's, the, what's the biggest gig that you've played so far? Probably our last one. That, uh, yeah, the yeah. last one was really good, Metal Fest, uh, November 15th. Uh, Metalworks put that on. Uh, we played with uh, Discord, Orchid's Curse. And Ear to Ear. And Ear to Ear. That was a good show. Nice. Yeah. That's a good lineup. Um, so I know it's kind of hard. It has kind of a je ne sais quoi about it. But like when you guys get up on stage, when you're doing your respective roles, kind of what exactly, I don't know, what does that feel like? Like you, know, like you kind of, no, I, I know it's really, it's a really broad question but i'm just always interested in like what makes you guys keep coming back to live performing to playing metal to just doing what you guys do well it's intense up there uh the adrenaline gets flowing for sure oh yeah um <laughs> i mean it's all about the crowd reaction our shows have been great so far the crowd gets involved and it's very energetic and mm -hmm. we have a good time definitely okay even our first show at gus's uh i think it was november 28th last yeah. year or something yeah, right but uh it was great people were up moving yeah. mm -hmm. Um, I did get a question, and so you guys are kind of sort of starting out. You've celebrated a year performing together, I guess that would be. Um, let's think about just kind of pie-in-the-sky dreams for Inviting End. What kind of is the next step from where we are right now? You guys have an EP that you just released. You've kind of been uh, performing up to very recently. What would the next milestone be on your trip up? Full-length album. Full-length album? Okay. Yeah. With physical copies. With physical yes. copies. <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Obviously. Would you want to do, like, vinyl or something? That would be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. I would. I'd, yeah. Yeah? Ideally, we'd like, love the vinyls. I'm a fan of physical media. Yeah. yeah. I did get a question on Facebook uh, from Chan Fitzgerald. Biggest fan, when is a full album coming out? I know it's. I know that that's kind of good question. in the future. Kind of not really sure yet. But it's okay because these things, the best the best albums take time. So yeah. no need to rush. Um, I think we're hoping for late next year. Okay. Or, yeah. Late late 2014. Late 2014. Yeah. Right on. Um, I also got a question from one of our big fans of the show, Rob Crow. He wants to know, and this is a bit more hypothetical. Uh, if you were to open for any band in the world. I mean, metal band, let's say, would be most appropriate. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you wanted to open for Celine Dion, big oh, yeah. all power to you. But uh, let's, let's think about it. Like, what band would you like to open for at this stage in your career? I mean, I don't think they need an opener, but Iron Maiden. That's the dream right yeah. there. They, they definitely don't need an opener, but <laughs> I would love to be that opener. <laughs> Good one. 
Uh, I think soil work. I think that would be awesome to meet all those guys. Although it's not the same, you know, lineup as it always has been, but uh, that'd mm-hmm. be great. Okay. Uh, I think my biggest would probably be Lamb of God. Lamb of God. That would be yeah. sweet. Um, Mark, yeah. Um, I mean, I guess I re- I saw Black Dollar Murder here. I think it was last year. Was it last yeah. May? Yeah. yeah. Uh, wicked show. I think I would really. I would like to open for those guys. That was an incredible show. That was the first time I saw. I really heard them that much. I, I don't think I heard them even before that show. And I would love to open for those guys. Okay. Yeah. Um, I I've kind of asked a lot of the formative questions, but uh, let's talk about live shows from the other side of it. Uh, Mark, you mentioned you know Black Dahlia Murder and uh, such. What are some other like really memorable shows that you've been in the that you've been in the crowd for? I'd have to say the job for a cowboy lamb of God and Guerra show that was in two thousand nine. Yeah, that was great. That, that was, was on my birthday too. Yeah, I was sure. losing it. <laughs> nice birthday right. present. That sounds awesome. Oh anyway. no, it was amazing. I actually uh, during the uh, Lamb of God's third song, uh, third or fourth song, whatever. Randy came down from the stage and started hanging out over the uh, the barrier, right and screaming over the crowd and just rocking out over the crowd. Okay. So I took the opportunity, sh- shimmied my way through the crowd, propped myself up, threw my arm around him, and started headbanging and screaming with him. He just looked me dead in the eyes and started headbanging back <laughs> and just wrapped his arm around me. And it was yeah. What a feeling! Oh, dude, unbelievable! Like Lamb of God's by far my favorite like metal band for sure. And and, like I was here like maybe a month and a half, two months, mm. and then I'm diving not only into my like <laughs> favorite metal show like yeah. that I could think of at the moment, you know, Joffrey Cowboy, Lamb of God, by far two of my top time at the time, but uh, to be able to not only just see Lamb of God and Randy rock out, but yeah. to be throw that my close. yeah be that close, throw my arm around him and rock look him dead in the him. eyes and yeah yeah headbang with him and just like yeah it was totally surreal man that's amazing. Um, I don't know if this is the same show. I just ha- I know I have a classmate who's been to a Lamb of God show. I don't know if it was the one that came to Halifax. So I'll ask you: Did they do a thing where like it seemed like it was getting out, and then Randy did the opening to Omerta, and then everybody rushed back? Did that happen at yours? I was too drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. Remember I, can't remember. I was at that show as well. Actually, uh, my wife was working it, and she uh, she got to meet Chris Adler. I was really really jealous. Lucky, yeah. I just, I just, I just felt I need to ask. I don't remember where that show was. I just remember that at the very end, when it like looked like they were done, like they'd done encores and stuff. I think they might have done that. I yeah, can't, like I everybody can't started to leave, and then Randy gets back on stage and does like the spoken word open to Omerta, and they start playing. Everybody rushes back, and it's just like that must have been insane. <laughs> Sounds like that might have happened, but, but it was uh, such a blur. It's and all right. Too many beers the in whole between thing them was, now. It was awesome. So okay. It's just, Amazing. Any other ones particularly <laughs> jump to mind? Uh, the Opeth Catatonia concert. We was, were there. Yeah. Actually, Project and I were there. We got that to see it great. live. Yeah, that was yeah. pretty cool. Was Opeth show. was flawless, I must say. We were, like, Project and I were both really um, amazed at how technically good they were and how charismatic uh, he was on stage. Yeah, like, what good a funny guy, too. too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That was awesome. Um Keenan, I hope not to bring up a terribly painful recent memory, but you had a uh, <laughs> an interesting experience at last night's Iron Giants Death Valley Driver Hitman show. That yes, you're still recovering from. Yes, yeah. I uh, went down, check out the show, take some pictures and such, mm-hmm. and uh, as I'm up front stage doing my uh, you know picture duties, whatever, someone decides to latch on, throw their arm around me, and make a wall of headbangers. But uh, I didn't want to be a part of that at the moment. I got a thousand dollar piece of equipment in my hands That's and. Cool. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, so uh, they throw their arm up around me and jolt me in the wrong direction and uh, just uh, totally snafu'd my neck there. And uh, yeah, they, they turn the tables on you in a bad way. Oh yeah, dude, I turned into Frankenstein. I was walking around just like couldn't move. You Pro- know, I was wearing the project was telling me that story, and it's like it's one thing when you know, you, you know, when we were kids, like I would just run up to somebody and like vault off their shoulders from them, but they knew they were coming. Yeah, but you are trying to protect yourself, obviously, and this whatever camera you have which was probably worth quite a pretty penny and you just do not want to go that way and so no. you're slamming their body weight onto you like i can just feel sympathetic pain right now oh yeah it's it's, it's like awful. one thing if it's like expected you can see them come in but like when you're not anticipating like a whole another being's weight just tossed on you on <laughs> one side of your body it's just yeah it's it's no no fun at all Jeez. so me and gavin went to the hospital he drove me there today and uh we spent a couple hours down there 
razzing the doctors, and they tossed me out with some pain pills, and mm. I'm kind of loopy at the moment. So, well, you, you're, rep <laughs> you're representing yourself fairly well. For uh, like, we've been loopier on the show, and we, you could really tell. So you're <laughs> holding up pretty well, Keenan. I got to give it to you. Well, thanks, man. I, I heard you were in a criminal amount of pain. Yeah, earlier. leaning into this mic. Yeah, we, we can take pain. We bounce back. <laughs> Fair enough. Let's get back to more of Inviting Ends EP Blood Grounds. Before we do, remember, if you're listening to us live here, go to Facebook.com slash Heavier Than Heaven Halifax. Give us a like. If you haven't done that already, go to Facebook.com slash Inviting End. Give them a like. Support local music. If you want to talk to us here on Heavier Than Heaven, you can uh, private message us at either of our Facebook pages. You can email us at Heavier Than Heaven CKDU at gmail.com, or you can call the request line 902 494 Two four eight seven. We would love to hear from you. Coming up on the Bloodgrounds EP, it's going to be Shiver, number two song. Let's go just uh, right down the aisle. Anything to say about that before we uh, get right into it? Uh, the song's about a cold day in hell. Ooh, cold <laughs> day in hell. I like it. I like it. 20 minutes to 11 o'clock. Let's get to song number two off the Bloodgrounds EP. Invitingend.bandcamp.com. Name your price, and this album can be yours. It's Shiver. On Heavier Than Heaven. Come on.
We're back on the air with Inviting End here on Heavier Than Heaven. We were just heard from Last Call Chernobyl, Friends of Inviting End, and Level 7 from their album Drowning Beneath the Sound of Change. We also heard track number 2 from their Bloodgrounds EP, Inviting End. You can go to invitingend.bandcamp.com to buy it, and that was called Shiver. Now, before we get into the next kind of set of what uh, I wanted to direct you guys into, got a couple of fan questions coming in all over Facebook, facebook.com slash heavier than heaven Halifax. Thank you guys for having those questions in. Remember, if you send us a question, give us a like. That'd be sweet. Please? <laughs> I beg you? That's okay. Uh, Melissa Zwicker wants to know, do you find it difficult to jam or practice metal music here in Halifax? Any noise complaints about the party barn? <laughs> <laughs> well, I kind of hit on the one earlier. Um, it was earlier during the summer we were having, I, I think it was the one time we decided to jam on the weekend. Uh, and uh, we probably half an hour through it or whatever, and we took a break. And this old lady, probably about five houses up from Mark or whatever, she comes down the road and she causes this big old stink. Why do you guys have to keep playing your torture music through all the weekend? I'm trying to relax over here. And it was just like, 
Yeah, a torture music? Torture <laughs> <laughs> music. We were disturbing her gardening. She was yeah, pretty stressed out. Yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Tor- like, torture music? That's yeah. that's really heavy. She said that multiple times. She like, torture music. Yeah. Uh, like, I've played torture music on this <laughs> show. <laughs> Guys, like don't let that get to your head. It's not that. <laughs> Her yeah. eyes were like bloodshot. Like I, I thought she was gonna blow up. Like literally. shaking with anger. She was shaking with anger. Yeah, oh, she was furious. <laughs> it was crazy. I, I'm expecting like the next thing to hear. It's just like and God Himself will strike you down. Yeah, and she like, pulls a, pulls a gat out of her like garter belt or something. Just like ah! <laughs> gat made out of a Bible. Just yeah. like yeah. sawed off out of a Bible. Just. <laughs> <laughs> Get her on the phone here. <laughs> totally. She'll be the one to call in, probably. Old lady from five houses down inviting in. Please call 902-494-2487. Tell us about this torture music you're hearing, because I don't think it's them. I think you have Satanists on your block. <laughs> Better not, these guys. Uh, we have another question in a bit of a different vein from Chan Fitzgerald. Thoughts on the new Trivium album? Are they, an, or are they an influence at all? Now, Trivium's latest album is... I want to say Darkness Falls. That's the name of a horror movie, though. It's, oh, uh, it's right over behind me. I'm looking for it. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, have you guys heard any of it? I heard the In Waves one yeah, before. That, yeah. That was pretty good. Okay. Uh, especially the title track. Um, I don't know if I've heard that. If there's a newer one, I haven't heard that yet. Vengeance <laughs> Falls. That's the name of it. Okay. Yeah. I knew it was something false. Um, yeah, if you guys haven't heard of it, like, I mean, I know this was for uh, Inviting End, but I recommend that you check it out. Yep. Very, very good. Awesome. Yeah, one, I, I one was digging in waves. That was really cool. So I should check out that. Anyway. One of my yeah. favorites of the year, to tell you the truth. We, yeah. We've been a pretty big fan of Trivium since the beginning. Like, we listened to them when... Since the first beginning started. of time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> since the beginning of time, Inviting End has Man, tried, these, these has were... striven to find that one band they can listen to. <laughs> Trivium <laughs> is that band, as well as, like, 14 others. The lead singer, I think, was, like, 16 from Florida or something. Yeah, he's, he like... Really uncomfortably young. We were like, holy shit, these guys are fucking insane. Oh, shit. Sorry. Guys. <laughs> <laughs> I knew that you happen. couldn't hold it. My apologies, everybody. But it's, you know. It's the damn you get, wine. <laughs> you, get four, you get four metal musicians and a guy who's had, like, a glass of Mountain Dew. <laughs> and it gets nuts. Mountain Dew is so, like, I can't believe the amount of sugar rush I got from, like, one glass of Mountain Dew. <laughs> it's the devil's liquid, I tell you. It really is. <laughs> Anyway, speaking of bands that you like, <laughs> you're, of course, part of the Halifax Meadow community, which is, you know, the more that you dig under the surface, the more that you find how deep it is, how deep the connections are. Uh, you mentioned, of course, when we, uh, you guys found the last Culture Noble album that you guys are friends with them, um, and we can kind of use that as a bit of a jumping-off point. Tell me a bit more about the connections that you have uh, within the Halifax uh, metal scene. Uh Name um, drop a little bit. Yeah, I mean, we played a bunch of shows with Dumpster Mummy. Those guys are great. Mm-hmm. Um, Bill's helped us out with tons of shows. Yeah, Bill Arsenault with Metalworks uh, and his band Doom Machine. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I know that... Uh, Mr. Hogan. Yeah, Josh, yeah. Hogan's Josh Hogan's Vlad Thursday. I feel like if like you live in Halifax and you have any kind of facial hair, you probably know Josh Hogan. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a safe bet. Yeah. Yeah, we've worked with him a couple times. He's great. And yeah. Orchid's Curse is amazing. Absolutely. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, and so I feel like there's a lot of it that is very, very tight-knit. Uh, you know, a lot of bands kind of know each other, support each other, you know, hang out, or just friends with each other. Um the Halifax metal scene itself, like, I'm, it's kind of a broad question. I'll try and open it up a little bit. Like, what are your kind of general thoughts on it? It seems to be growing more and more, like, the more you check on it. And it seems that it's, there's still, it's deep, but there's a lot of room for, like, new bands such as yourselves to kind of make their name. And so have you found that it's easy to get into? Are there any difficulties that you've faced in Halifax or in the HRM? Um the number of venues you can play at yeah. is it's a challenge. Kind of, kind of limited because let me think. There's, there's Michaels, there's Gus's, um, there is the Mark, the, yeah. the Seahorse, which yeah. rarely does any metal nowadays. Though. Absolutely, kind of yeah. died off in that Seahorse, Marquee, uh, Pavilion, Pavilion, yeah. yeah. For th- and then even then, that's kind of got a little bit of a, um, I, I guess reputation. You could say, kind of like, yeah. Um, yeah, Michaels I, is supposedly shutting down soon too. Like is it really? in the new year, yeah, it's the whole. It sucks. 
Yeah, yeah the whole uh, yeah strip mall there. place got bought out. Yeah, Meets, oh, like no. and I love going to shows there. It's very very like close knit. I remember I went to go see um, Death Valley Driver, and I was like, it was at one a.m. and I was like one of the only six people there, and it was great. But <laughs> um, but it, but it's been like a lot busier than that too. So. Um, that's very interesting. I've never heard that kind of maybe not criticism, but just acknowledgement that it's not as deep for venues as it could be in other cities. Yeah, maybe. no, for sure. Like we, there's like so many, so many metal bands here, but uh, with like three venues, it's hard for them to really get shows because yeah. on the weekend you maybe book like six metal bands out of twenty-five, and that's filling up all the venues. Well, not six. That's like probably twelve or whatever. You know, three venues. Sure. Four. Yeah, good math there. <laughs> uh, I'm an English major. I will just take your word for it. If you start saying numbers... I'm a film student. <laughs> <laughs> I did that to get out of math, but... <laughs> yeah, I took film studies in college, too. So nice. That was for the people who don't want to make films. They just want to talk about them. <laughs> <laughs> I can tell you what mise-en-scene is. I cannot handle being a director. Well, let's just leave it there. Yeah. <laughs> you and me, we fit. <laughs> Uh, so, okay, so that's a bit of a challenge. Um, is there anything else that's really, or is it like, because when I ask that question or similar questions to other bands, it's mostly fairly positive. Like, that's one of the only negative things that I've heard. I think the community itself is, like, really inviting. Like, you know, you yeah. see the same people out at shows, you know, it's great. You know, people are buying your shirts and stuff like that, too, right? Everyone's uh, yeah, yeah. really into it. So, yeah. Right on. It's, that's good to hear. It's, sorry, keep continue. It seems a lot uh, more broad now. I know when... We were playing as uh, Only After Dusk. Uh, I don't know if that genre of music was totally in at the time. It was more like, I think it seemed to be more like grind and black metal and okay. stuff like that. And now melodic death metal and, uh, you know, um, metalcore and stuff like that f seem to be fitting into the scene now. Yeah, it's okay. expanding for sure. Yeah. yeah. And that's cool. That's I good. Like that. I yeah. mean, that involves a lot of different um, variety that we don't have to kind of have the same thing. What about in terms of the bigger concerts? Uh, how many of you are going to Black Sabbath, if any? Oh, I have a ticket. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. I wish. <laughs> yeah, I wish. <laughs> I was, I was, was slash am dead broke when that, when that news <laughs> came out, so I was just, yeah. Yeah. well, I guess I'll just have to go and stand outside. <laughs> Not the same as if they were on the commons, but I'll, you know, i got to make the most of it. Um, but yeah, like, so, like, we've had stuff like Black Sabbath, you mentioned before, Opeth and Catatonia, um, the Lamb of God uh, Guar show. Um, Good job for Cowboys. Inflames was awesome when they Infl came here. Oh, yeah. 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 That was great. If you go even further back, you know, there's been a couple of Slayer shows. Yeah, yeah Slayer uh, and Megadeth yeah. and Testament were there. Yeah, yeah. Was, Metallica, was Rock, uh, Rock on the Hill. Uh, yeah, so what do you? What about that? Do you get, Because Halifax seems to be growing uh, exponentially year after year for all the kinds of acts that we're getting. Um, do you feel like in terms of metal are there any bigger metal acts that you think that we could probably realistically get around now that we could really like sink our teeth into like that we haven't gotten already and what i mean i'll, I'll flesh that out a little bit like if you were to think about because obviously there's tiers of you know we have our local bands who are known to some degree you know uh bands that have already kind of started to make their name and then there's just, of course you leap up to like sabbath metallica testament um job for cowboy blah 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 um, what are some other ones that you would really like to see here? Um, I mean, I'd love Iron Maiden to come back. I know there was a long time ago when yeah, they played that'd here. Be, that would be great. Actually, funny enough, we have a an ID that uh, one of the members of Iron Maiden recorded for us way back in the 80s when CKDU was young. Nice. I'll have to try, I'll try awesome. and play that for you. But yeah, that's absolutely a good one because Iron Maiden is still pulling off those amazing shows. Yeah. Uh, so that's a, really, that's a really good one. That would be a can't miss. Yeah. Can't miss. Definitely. Any any other ones that you can think of? Um, I'd still love to see Slipknot. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, so, uh, nice. Yeah, that would be awesome. Yeah. Um, on a little bit of a tangent just now that I think of it, uh, so new Slipknot's coming out in 2014. Yep. Uh, Jim Root recently kind of is taking off Stone Sour to uh, work on the new album, to write it a little bit. Um, so... The last one we had, the last album we had was, I thought it was really good. All Hope Is Gone, right? All Hope Is yeah. Gone. Yeah. 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 yeah, couldn't think of the name. But like, really good album. Um, as, like, Keenan, you mentioned that you were big into Slipknot. I'm guessing that you still are. Oh, yes. Um, you guys kind of also 
Uh, uh, yeah, I've been, varying, I've been a fan. Since varying varying degrees. Yeah, Gavin, your fan, Justin. Yeah. More recently got into them. Like okay. I like the song, like that Snuff song. I don't know, it's probably my favorite song from the last I album. I love that song, too. Yeah, which isn't even like the heaviest one. But, you know. Yeah, and um, like, and I just listened to uh, some of Stone Sour's latest, and it was like really good. What? Um, where would you like to see Slipknot go from here? Because their sound is always kind of evolving. You go back to their original one that's really raw, and then they ended up polishing a bit more, adding a bit more layers to it. Like, do you kind of want to see them do the same thing or continue to grow? Because if they continue to grow, then there's kind of the risk of alienation, as we've seen with Metallica and what. <laughs> so I just want them to make sure they keep that atmospheric aspect to them, like uh, Scissors, uh, some of their older tracks like that, The Virus of Life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like yeah, that that kind of raw uh, creativity, really, kind of sound of insanity. Yeah, that that's great. I hope they keep that that. Uh, that griminess to them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Definitely. Um, one more question, fan question from Brent Preeper. You've listed influences, but how did you come up with your sound? How do you write your music? Oh, buddy. That's a, <laughs> now that's the process right there. That's some inside the actor's studio crap right there. Nice, Brent. From the heart. <laughs> it's actually, actually, uh, the heart. It's actually Brent. <laughs> yeah, it's inspired by Brent. Um... <laughs> We just all go to sleep with a picture of Brent above our beds, and uh, yeah, he is our Buddha. And uh, <laughs> there you have it—the secret to success he, he's from inviting in is all. Brent Reaper. <laughs> you heard it here. You heard it here. <laughs> no, but I mean, like half of our ideas we probably get from just jamming on the spot. Mm. Um, a lot of it uh, starts with a guitar idea, and then we flesh it out a bit with the drums, to get the yeah. song structure down. Gavin mm-hmm. usually writes a good few riffs and brings it to the table. Uh, mm-hmm. Actually, with this new album, Justin's been pulling, bringing some riffs to the table. Yeah, S- some uh, uh, you know song song riffs. Yeah. I I'd guess. say they normally still start with guitar <laughs> and then <laughs> guitar. We work it out. Yeah. I mean, all the lyrics are Keenan on the EP. Okay. Uh, those are all Keenan. Um, but I mean, the the music goes back to I guess 2010. Okay. Uh, just some demo ideas and yeah. It, it all started with guitar, and then, yeah. Yeah, for the EP, uh, they gave me the uh, the tracks pretty much uh, mostly completed, just mm-hmm. lacking vocals, obviously, but uh, they already had names for the songs. Okay. So, like, Red Sight, uh, Bloodgrounds, and that, they, they already had those names for the songs, and they were like, all right, you can change the name if you want, but we're pretty settled on these names. And uh, so I just kind of came up with my own concept around what I thought they might have meant by the title Red Sight or Beyond Mortal Reach and stuff like sure. that. And so I just... Uh, they had the songs, and I just kind of wrote what I thought the music felt like to me, kind of thing. Okay. Um, before we go into break, it's about two minutes after 11. Um, and thank you, everybody, for sending in your uh, your messages, your questions to facebook.com slash heavier than heaven Halifax. Uh, keep going. Brent Preeper says, always welcome to rub my stomach, Keenan. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if I, if I may indulge just a little bit, we've kind of already talked about, mentioned kind of a newsy thing, but we have a segment on here that is dedicated to news, and there's one, there's one thing that I kind of want your guys' opinion on before we go to break. So let's do a very quick, uh, version of our news segment, which is called the... Metal. News. Wire! (laughs) So... Oh, I like that. Thank you very much. Nice. Uh, one of the things that came out today is the 2014 Grammy nominees. Now, I know that the Grammys are kind of, you know, like, pff, who really cares? They don't really know anything. But it would probably be good, <laughs> be a good idea. Like, as soon as I say that, put that to the test. Because they are still keeping in Best Metal Performance. God bless them. So here are the five nominees for Best Metal Performance. And I'll see what you guys think of. So I'll list them off, and then you guys can kind of give me your thoughts. Uh, Anthrax's cover of TNT. Have you guys heard that? I've not listened to no, it. No, I haven't I've, heard that haven't either. Heard that no. At all, no. Mm-hmm. We'll have to. No. <laughs> all right. Well, you know, stay tuned. Stay tuned. Sorry. Stay tuned. <laughs> stay tuned for that. That's all right. Uh, Black Sabbath and God is Dead from their latest album, Thirteen. Oh yeah, that's a good song. Yeah, that's a wicked yeah. song. You know, it's. I like that a lot. You know, it's funny. Like a lot of people, a lot of people, metal musicians especially, like really like that album, and then people who are kind of outside of metal didn't really like it. Like I liked it. I bought it and. Mm-hmm. Uh, so that's the one that they chose from that one. 
good song, yeah, definitely. Song. Yeah, I think that whole album was awesome, but yeah. that song in particular. Yeah. Like the stories and stuff, they're good. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dream Theater from their latest self-titled album, The Enemy Inside. I stopped listening to Dream Theater years ago. <laughs> there you go. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not as familiar with that one, yeah. Okay. I believe we played that on the show once, and it was like, Okay. <laughs> because like we like full disclosure, we were interested in Dream Theater through rock bands. We would like uh, Panic Attack, uh, Pull Me Under, and so like all of those really like atmospheric songs. And this one's like, eh. yeah, they're all great <laughs> I mean, players. I actually saw them open up for uh, Iron Maiden in uh, in Montreal, and they they killed it. They're all like Sick. that's still when uh, right. Portnoy was still drumming they're, for them yeah. before Mangini joined. Mm-hmm. Their new drummer Mangini's really 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 good. Mm-hmm. Uh, Actually, got to meet him once back 2003. Nice. Uh, the, he did a drum, uh, fastest drummer contest here in the city. And right. I was in that, and uh, he was the host. Okay. Yeah, he's a good guy. Um, then we have In Due Time by Kill Switch Engage from their latest album. Uh, I did give that a listen. That was good. Yeah. I, like I really liked it. Like That was their premiere single. Really good. You know what, though? Yo. I gotta say, I'm a huge fan of Howard Jones when he was the singer. No kidding. Yeah. We, Project and me both. That was kind of hard to accept uh, when we, uh, when uh, he left. And it's and it's hard, like, because the, the, the new slash old guy is like, he's good. Yeah, he's great. Yeah. It's just not many people are Howard Jones. Oh, man. Howard's voice is strong. Oh, buddy. Uh, no I saw them great. live in Montreal oh, opening yeah. for In Flames, and he was dead on the whole time. Yeah. The whole band was He was doing close. dive rolls on stage. Oh, yeah. yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. Like, uh, they're all ripped. It looks like they're, they hit the gym every day and just ready to kill everyone. Mark's into that. <laughs> <laughs> Gun show engaged. <laughs> pretty, pretty much. And finally, one that I was not aware of. Uh, Room 24 by Volbeat featuring King Diamond. Any of you guys? King Diamond! <laughs> oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> yeah, King Diamond. And we're off the air. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, I'm not terribly familiar with Volbeat, and I just did not know, I don't know anything about that. Have you guys? No, I don't I, know anything about no, that either. I, I don't. I'll have to play that, on, play that in the second hour. And then finally, uh, Black Sabbath are also nominated for Best Rock Album. Next to David Bowie, Kings of Leon, Led Zeppelin, Queens of the Stone Age, and Neil Young. So, oh, okay. very diverse Queens, rock albums. Queens of the Stone Age, new album. I heard a few tracks off of that. It was great. Okay. I actually had not heard anything about that, but uh, yeah. good. Still going. All right. Well, um, the somewhat uninformed opinions of five guys who have heard some of the songs, but that's okay. <laughs> like, I just I wanted to run those by you, make sure, and it's great reason for us to play it. In the second hour, my goodness, people are lighting up the messages, and uh, we're going to get into that in a little bit. But for now, that's the end of the Metal Newswire, featuring Inviting End. Well, in the second hour, of course, we will return with more Inviting End. Uh, going to... Keep answering fan questions here on, like, I'm getting more than I can keep track of. I'm going to have to start writing them down soon. Uh, this is this is excellent. Please keep doing that. Facebook.com slash Heavier Than Heaven Halifax is where you want to go to uh, ask more questions. So please do. We'll be answering more. It is eight minutes after 11, but we just got to go to a quick commercial break. So I'll tell you right now. After these messages, we'll be right have you found yourself walking by a restaurant that you really want to try, but just can't afford it? Maybe you want to try that new yoga class, see that new exhibit at the museum, or maybe get a nice classy haircut, but it's just a little bit out of your price range. Maybe the Coast can help you out with that. The Coast deal site is the best source for discounted yoga, burgers, and haircuts. Sign up for the CoSmart newsletter at thecoast.ca and get new deals sent directly to your inbox. 30 to 50% off gift certificates to Halifax bars, restaurants, apartment rentals, stores, and services. Support local businesses while saving money. Check out the best deals Halifax has to offer at coastmart.ca. Hey you, did you donate $20 or more to CKDU's 2013 funding drive? If so, thank you! 
you are eligible to win a trip for two to New York City, courtesy of Porter Airlines. You must pay your pledge by 9 a.m. on December 17 to be eligible for the grand prize draw. Be here at CKDU. Really appreciate your support. You can pay your pledge by calling 494-6479, dropping in on the fourth floor of the Student Union Building on Dalhousie University campus, or going to ckdu.ca and click the Donate button and pay through PayPal. Tune in to 88.1 FM or ckdu.ca on Tuesday, December 17, to find out if you are the winner of a trip for two to New York City. All winners in our eyes. Please enter your route. You have selected freedom. Exit the house where you have never gotten higher or felt lower. Make a U-turn away from the belief that you are defeated. Recalculating route. Now approaching the first stop on your new path. You have arrived at Adsum for women and children. Help us support women as they transition from crisis to stability. Visit AdsomForWomen.org. If you want the best in heavy metal on the radio, you want Heavier Than Heaven. Broadcasting live every Saturday night at 10 p.m. Atlantic. The heavy metal show that lives on Atlantic. The heavy metal show that lives on CKDU 88.1 FM and CKDU.ca with hosts Danger Zone. It's clobbering time! Yeah! Yeah! And Project. We don't put on the show. <laughs> you press the wrong button! Find out more at facebook.com slash heavier than heaven Halifax. Heavier than heaven. Live every Saturday at 10 p.m. Atlantic on CKDU. No false metal. Hi, this is Dave Mays from My Maiden. I'm Steve Harris from My Maiden. You're listening to CKDU in Halifax. Be you. Stay heavy, stay hard. Make it like that. <laughs> It's Maximum Carnage here on Heavier Than Heaven with guests inviting end from Halifax, Nova Scotia, Canada. It's where we are broadcasting from here on CKDU 88.1 FM and CKDU.ca. My name is Danger Zone Projects behind me. Man, Hello. <laughs> keep, keeping it down as he does. And we have four out of five members of local band inviting end having some fun, answering some questions, just being cool guys. We got Keenan Carroll. Word. We got Gavin Edwards. Yeah. Justin Como. Yep. And Mark Eisner. Hello. Welcome back, gentlemen. Now, it is almost quarter after 11. Let's get into a couple more fan questions to start us on the right track. Uh, Chan Fitzgerald has a couple questions for you. Let's start off with a more serious one. Any tour plans for the future? Uh, there will be, yes. Um, it's something we haven't... Uh, we haven't... Uh, <laughs> Is that Trying to say again? something, Mark? Uh, yeah, we're hoping after the the album drops that we're going to be able to get on uh, at least a small tour. Uh, late late yeah. twenty fourteen was when you yeah. kind of yeah, yeah. So so maybe uh, like spring or summer of twenty fifteen. We're hoping. I don't know. It's okay. A lot of planning. But it is a lot of planning, and we haven't really uh, touched on it too much yet. But we we do hope to get there. Yeah. Okay. Definitely. Uh, she also wants to know boxers or briefs. <laughs> boxers. Same. Boxers. Word. Command the boys. What? No. Boxers. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, I don't imagine that people of 
well, I mean, I'm of a certain size, to be sure. And just <laughs> boxers, I don't know why people go briefs. Why do that? Give me sports. Yeah, some give me some room, like you know. Snug. <laughs> yeah. yeah. If I'm playing soccer, I want, you know, something tight. Yeah. You Kicking. <laughs> well, yeah. boxer briefs. It's the best yeah. of both worlds. <laughs> uh, we also have another question from Matthew Snow. Uh, we talked oh, no. about prospective things that you, uh, <laughs> prospective gigs that you could play with anybody. But if you could play with anybody from the local scene, like, is there anybody that you would really like to kind of hook up with in that regard? Well, actually, Inviting End hasn't played with Last Call Chernobyl. It was only our last band. Ooh. So we'd, we'd love yeah. to get a show going yeah. with those guys. I know they were looking to do that, too. Yeah, it's that'd be not, a good time. It's not always uh, the want that gets you there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I understand. I and, understand uh, very much so. Uh, um, sorry, go ahead. Uh, defective Perception. Uh, I'm not sure if they're still jamming nowadays, but I know they played uh, last summer, and uh, mm -hmm. Matt Francis, he uh, heads up that band as vocalist and bassist, and mm -hmm. they're brutal heavy, and yeah, I'm, I'd, 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 I'd love to put off a show with them. Sure. Um, putting, out, putting out the call. Yeah. Um, Helicost. I've my oh, my old yeah. bands have played. I played with them a couple times, like way back. But those they were uh, a huge influence for me as well. So mm -hmm. those guys are great. Yeah, they're mm -hmm. from down our way. I mean, Gavin. Yeah, on the Eastern Shore. School. Yeah. All right, good choices. Uh, inviting and putting out the call to local Haligonian bands. They want you, brother, at Hell in a Cell. <laughs> <laughs> Feel free to cut a Randy Savage promo on him if you want to. <laughs> Hogan, Hogan. Ultimate Warrior? No. <laughs> no, you know, of course. I know you. <laughs> oh, Kogan. <laughs> no. Oh, God. Uh, we have even more stuff to come. We're going to be playing another track off of their Inviting End's EP, Bloodgrounds, which is on invitingend.bandcamp.com. You can own it for free. You can name your price. Of course, they would love if you could name a good price. But... <laughs> Uh, spread spread the word around that invitingend.bandcamp.com and uh, support local music because they're awesome the next track we're going to be playing for them is called Beyond Mortal Reach track number 3 from the Bloodgrounds EP and then we're going to be getting into some Grammy nominated stuff and King Diamond Woo, you guys are Grammy nominated in my heart Aww. <laughs> but uh, we'll be getting into a song that apparently none of us have heard of before, but it is gr enough that it's Grammy nominated, so we're going to take a listen to it. Volbeat featuring King Diamond and Room 24 from the new album Outlaw Gentlemen and Shady Ladies. But right now, let's start it off right. Let's get to Inviting End from their Bloodgrounds EP. The song is called Beyond Mortal Reach here on Heavier Than Heaven. <laughs>
The Grammy-nominated Volbeat track featuring King Diamond, Room 24, right here on Heavier Than Heaven. We're back with Inviting End, who we also heard from uh, the song Beyond Mortal Reach from their EP, Blood Grounds. Go to facebook.com slash heavier than heaven Halifax for the link to their band camp so you can continue to support them. I've talked a lot about, or not I've, I've asked you a lot about the metal life, and you guys have kind of told me about that, how you guys met up, uh, what's it like to perform, the metal community itself. Now let's uh, let's go away from metal for just a little bit. Tell me what you guys like to do in your spare time between work and metal. What is it that you like to kind of relax with? Um, I probably play too many video games. All right, yeah. you can definitely relate. Yeah. Um, lately, a lot of GTA Five. That's been the most po- that's been the most popular one, and your uh, chances are, if you own an Xbox Three Hundred and Sixty, and you statistically you do, uh, you PS Three. PS3. Oh, okay. Even, <laughs> even better. <laughs> right on. <laughs> and uh, Borderlands 2. Yeah? Yeah, another great one. Right on. But, I mean, I don't I don't just play games, I guess. Uh, um, <laughs> but lately, yeah, I've been playing a lot of games. Uh, <laughs> just uh, doing uh, work during the day and then, okay. you know, playing a lot of guitar and writing some music, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, what, about th- what about the rest of you? I'd say drinking's probably a hobby. Okay, yeah. sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Take definitely. drinking very seriously. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Justin, tell me, tell me about drinking. What do you, what are you drinking? Uh, if uh, on the hard liquor, if I do some Crown Royal, a uh, whiskey <laughs> fan. Uh, from drinking beer, depends. It used to be hard on the keys. Mm. Uh, drinking keys light lately, just, you know, a little easier on the on the <laughs> body. Uh, other than that, I still play a lot of video games too. Play a lot of old games like uh, SNES and Nintendo, Mega Man games, and uh, man. and whatnot. Yeah. Um, I'm I'm gonna sound like a hipster, but although I don't know why it, it kind of has that reputation. PBR, pretty good. Paps Blue Ribbon, I like it. Yeah, I, I still don't think I've tried it. Actually, I don't think I've tried it. We only recently either. got it. Like I think it was earlier this year or late last year that we got the Tall Boy cans of PBR. Like give it a try. Like I like it. Yeah, I'll try yes. that. It's beer, right? Yeah. Okay. Like it, <laughs> it is, in fact, beer. No, it's peanut, peanut butter rum, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> peanut butter rum. Is there such a thing? PBR. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you got my hopes up. I was like, peanut butter rum and jelly shots. Oh. What are we doing here? Let's let's go. <laughs> I'm sold. I'm way ahead of you. Uh, Keenan, what about you? Uh, I also am a constant video game addict. It seems to be a running theme among metal musicians to kind of have that video game connection. Um, well, I mean, as we heard, I think it kind of was uh, put into us in our childhood mm-hmm. with, like, Maximum Carnage just having metal soundtracks in them, but uh, also just gameplay's awesome. Playing a lot of Battlefield 3, and I uh, actually just started playing the uh, Ocarina of Time on the 3DS. So, yeah. I recently finished Twilight Princess. Oh, nice. I haven't played time. anything after Majora's Mask. Uh, Twilight Princess is kind of mediocre. It's like good parts that don't add up to a whole like a great whole like parts of it were good and then other parts were not and the thing is is that the one after that skyward sword is like i like it but all of my other friends who have played it hate it and i'm just like i think something's wrong with me i think i have to play that again i don't trust myself i heard it was great i thought so too (laughs) maybe it is i just have to kind of reconfirm that what about you mark (laughs) Uh, lots of video games too. I there was a couple of humble bundles that came out, and I got a couple of those. Now I have more games, and I know what to do with. So we kind of have our own kind of contingents here. We got Gavin, who is kind of you know up to date, modern PS3 kind of stuff. Justin is retro gamer. Uh, Keenan kind of onto the Nintendo side of things with you know Maximum Carnage on the Super Nintendo, uh, Ocarina of Time. Uh, well, I don't. W- I don't want to just put you into that one uh, place. So, no. I, I, I mean, that's definitely where I started to get my ground base, like growing up and stuff. Sure. But, uh, uh, I mean, Max Payne was probably like the, the biggest series. I just uh, played through the first game again. Oh, dude, such a good series. Mm-hmm. The third one was a brilliant addition to it. Can't wait to get a PS3 and play it. Uh, Xbox, man. Uh, I'm going oh, PS4, yeah. but Xbox 360. All right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, but, yeah, no. Uh, also play a lot of poker too. Oh, right on. Yeah, um, poker. There's a game that I know Project will swear by, and it's called. Uh, is it just called Poker Night? Poker Night at the Inventory. Poker Night at the Inventory. It's a game that you can buy off like the Xbox Marketplace, uh, PSN, and it's just like uh, characters from different games and franchises. Like it's um, the new one has. 
Yeah. New one has Claptrap, Ash from Army of Darkness, nice. Brock Sampson from the Venture Brothers, Sam and Max. Yeah, it's pretty fun. funny, yeah. Yeah, definitely. And, uh, Mark, you're more of like a Steam slash PC gamer? Yeah, I, I really like uh, PC games. The shooters mostly, Battlefield 4, stuff like that. That's, a, that's actually how I mostly do a lot of my newer gaming, because my laptop that I got a year or two ago can handle video games, unlike my last nice. one. So, yeah, so a lot of Steam stuff. I think the most recent game I got isn't terribly recent, but Hotline Miami. Oh, yeah. Hotline Miami is gruesome, and it's <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> it's very violent, that. yeah. Yeah. Hotline Miami and the soundtrack is amazing. Oh, I've been playing GTA Five as well. Like, I, I have a PS Three mm-hmm. as well, so and the, jumping all over. The place. And, of, and of course, like with those, you mentioned like the humble bundles. There is the Steam Fall Sale, Autumn Sale that came around like just last week, and it was a thing of just like I mentioned how poor I am, and it's just like, well, <laughs> time to make myself cry by going onto the Steam Marketplace and seeing what <laughs> I can't buy or what my computer can't run, like Sleeping Dogs for five dollars, and I just <laughs> wanted to die. Yeah, that's <sighs> crazy. Yeah. Absolutely. But interesting how that kind of carries over from band to band, all those different kind of influences, uh, from video games to all kinds of other entertainment. So uh, good that we kind of all share that common bond. Um, if you guys don't mind, we have a semi-regular to regular segment that we uh, like to have on this show. Are you guys familiar with a uh, vocalist named Pelly K? No. No? No. no. Perfect. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is another edition of one of our favorite segments of the show, and now it's time for Everything Sounds Better with Pelly K. <laughs> Brought to you by YouTube.com slash P E L L E K. This is the segment of the show where we go to YouTube.com slash P E L L E K to um, European singer Pelly K. So I'll just kind of give, give you the rundown. We discovered him. Um, he did this amazing cover of Get Lucky by Daft Punk. He, his range is ridiculous. It's from the lowest lows to the highest highs. It will blow you away. So basically what we do is we take a piece of music from him. He usually, on his YouTube channel, he does, like, his own home studio. He does covers of stuff every week. He's done, like, anime theme songs. He's done, like, weird internet songs. He's doing a Christmas album right now. And just, like, all this kind of weird stuff that you wouldn't expect a metal vocalist to do. Uh, but, you know, being, like, a power metal kind of guy he nails it every time so let's go to this one right now you'll kind of get the idea of kind of the kind of stuff he's into so let's check it out right now this is the latest edition of everything sounds better with pelly k why that's one of our favorite segments on the show. Great. Like, I need another reason to get that song stuck in my head. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, You can always check that out. YouTube.com slash P-E-L-L-E-K. He is indeed releasing Christmas songs right around this time of year. So uh, go over there and have a good afternoon just playing through all the stuff he's got. Um, (laughs) Yeah, I just, I mean, it's kind of something fun that we just thought of, and it's just cool to listen to that sort of stuff. That was great. Nice. I'm glad you guys, I'm glad you guys enjoyed it. Um, no more questions on the Facebook, although Matthew Snow did, did say nerds. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, but if you want to ask Inviting End, we're in our final half hour here, 25 minutes of the show. If you want to ask Inviting End anything, you can do that by going to facebook.com slash heavier than heaven Halifax and messaging us there. Going to heavier than heaven CKDU at gmail.com as I'm doing right now. Uh, we still haven't gotten like a single show email from. The uh, from advertising that I feel like some people get the than confused T 
T-H-A-N and not T-H-E-N. I don't know. That's what I tell myself. As I, as I cry. What? No. We got rid of our Twitter. Uh, but you guys have Twitter. Twitter. Yes. Twitter.com slash, do. Invi- slash inviting end. Uh, yeah, I believe we do. <laughs> At inviting end on Twitter. Yeah. Kind of in the yeah. same category. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And you can also call the request line, 902-494-2487. Okay, here's a good one before we go to another music break. Justin Shore wants to know, top three favorite albums. Oh. Now, that is a loaded question, Justin Shore. Uh, but thank you for asking it. Uh, just How can you ask one. that with only 25 minutes left of the show? Like, <laughs> let's just, let's, instead of top three, let's throw out some, like, really, like, need definitive ones. Uh, okay, I got one. Uh, Dark Tranquility's character. Okay, character. Love it. Uh, everything about that album, the whole thing from start to finish. Okay. Avatar Schlott. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Good Swedish band, Avatar. Avatar? Yeah. Okay. Uh, uh, I'd say uh, Sonata Arctica uh, Silence. Okay. It's, uh, another Finland uh, band. Mm-hmm. I did. Yeah, I, I did kind of. I did kind of ask before. You mentioned killing is my business, and killing is and business is good. Business you know? is good. Yeah. Yeah. So that's a good one. Oh yeah. What about um, what about Metallica, Justin? Uh, well, a lot of the older albums are great. Sure. Um, you know, Black Album. Listen to that a whole bunch. You know what? <laughs> Just let me get my foot off here, and yeah. <laughs> um, well, what about Black Dolly Murder? Black Dolly Murder. I love. Um, I loved Ritual a lot. I mm. thought that was great. Mm-hmm. Um, other than that, uh, I Noc- think Miasma is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. I love Nocturnal. Okay. Yeah. Great. <laughs> what about the li- great. <laughs> What about the latest one? Uh, Ever Black. Ever Black. Yeah. I've. It's pretty it's good. A good album. Yeah. It's brutally heavy. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. It was really unrelenting when I was yeah. listen- when they were streaming it. I was just like, wow, these guys don't let up. I no. think they got a new drummer at that point too. I yeah. Believe, and he's really good. Okay. Um. Any other ones to add in before we continue? Probably. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, that's a tough question. It uh, absolutely is. If if you happen to think of any more, just let me know, and we'll continue to chime it in. Oh, yeah. Um, Kelly Eisner wants to know, I'd love to hear what the mem- from the members of Inviting End's ultimate goal is in terms of their music career. Do you guys have, like, a shared goal? Do you have individual goals that you want to meet for yourselves? Um, uh, I know myself. I'm a huge perfectionist. Mm-hmm. If uh, if we could just write uh, an awesome album that I know is awesome, even even I think it's awesome, then yeah, that'd be great. But I still have yet to think to make a whole a whole album that uh, that I'm really proud of. Everything about it, you know what I mean? Yeah. But uh, I just strive for that because I'm a perfectionist. So I understand the yeah. the, uh, the mindset. What was the question? Uh, your <laughs> <laughs> your ultimate goal in music for either you individually or like what you'd like to see the band accomplish like ultimately well i mean joining this band was it was a huge accomplishment in its own i mean i'd search for years in newfoundland trying to find a band and then i come here and these guys uh fall on my lap so to speak and uh been privileged to just even be a part of this band but um uh, i mean with the with the, the genre and everything in it and the guys but uh I've always wanted to take it to the next level to be, you know, that household name where it's like, you know, we're the next Lamb of God or the next Megadeth or the next Iron Maiden where, you know, it doesn't matter what part of the world you go to, someone says, hey, have you ever heard Inviting End? And like 85% of the people there go, yeah, I heard them. Yeah. Or, you know, I have their album, that kind of thing. And I, I, that's where I think I'd like I'd, I'd like Inviting End to go. I mean, on our Facebook page, you go through the, you know, those little... Facebook.com slash Inviting End. Yes. Hit the like button. Uh, but yeah, you go on there and you see those little stats from like where people are downloading or listening to to your to your stuff from, and we we've got from all over on all the side of Europe and things like that. You know, only it's like you know one or two hits, you know, whatever. But it's still a little surreal and a, a little step closer towards that goal of being a little more globally known. And uh, that's where that's where I'd like to take it. Okay, uh, Justin, a remark. I think if you ever were able to like you know make a living playing music, then you know that's I think when you've actually made it but metal is hard to do with that with especially uh you know other than that, i think if we had the opportunity to play like you know a huge show you know out, out of province or something like that with some big bands that would be you know probably something to remember for the rest of your life or something like that because you know the likelihood of actually 
making a career out of music is is really slim. Like you know, mm -hmm. it takes a lot of work, especially with metal. Yeah. Like you know, just the yeah. Yeah, um, I was <laughs> sorry, sorry. It sounded like, it's like no, I wasn't was sure who, who was going to talk. Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say um, kind of sort of what Gavin was saying, um, just making an album that I think this EP is kind of just touching the top of the iceberg. I think our potential is is pretty big. So just getting that recorded and uh, cool. getting it where we want it to be would, is, is a goal. Okay. Yeah, making qu us. quality music that has a... a Sort of a new, a new sound to it, like bringing a new a new sound to the the, the genre, basically, like mm -hmm. something fresh. That's okay. what we want. Yeah. Well, you yeah. have to you have that's to start somewhere, and yeah. that's and this is definitely an excellent start, as we're uh, just about to get to another track from Bloodgrounds. Again, inviting end.bandcamp.com if you want to support the continued rise of Halifax's own Inviting End. By the way, before I go on, where did the name Inviting End come from? Uh, brainstorm session, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I had come up with that. Yeah. But, uh, I think it was you. I'm not. I can't remember. Actually, <laughs> we, we, were we had a few around. choices, but that one stuck out. Yeah. yeah. I think it was the booze. Mm. <laughs> well, do you remember? Do you remember any of the other like almost almost rands or like ones that you got close with? I think Beyond Mortal Reach was one of our options. Yeah, it was actually a song name, but yeah, we definitely yeah. felt that inviting end kind of. Yeah, that was the runner up. Yeah. 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 It was. Okay. Yeah. Um, just looking at the latest question that we got, um, and we're getting even more. Oh my goodness! Uh, <laughs> uh, we'll go to one more from Chan Fitzgerald before we uh, continue on. Um, the question is, and we kind of touched on this a little, a little bit more, or a little bit earlier. Uh, where do you think the metal scene is right now in Halifax? Do you think it's growing or dying, or will always remain constant? So let's go with the second part of that one. Do you feel like it's growing? Do you feel like it's kind of stagnating? Maybe it's going down? Or I think it's growing. I think it's, it's expanding. I, I, yeah, I think we can agree on that. Is that yeah. It's definitely continuing to expand. And as we said, op offering more opportunities for up-and-coming bands such as yourself and affording more chances to see larger bands here as well. I think metal in general is growing. Yeah, I would agree with that. Absolutely. It's, a, it's a fairly new style of music, I guess. Yeah, mm -hmm. definitely. But, uh, I mean, in Halifax, there, there's a lot more variety now coming out. And uh, I love that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, absolutely. Okay, let's continue on. The next one from the Bloodgrounds EP by Inviting End is Defect, track number four. You can get this at invitingend.bandcamp.com. I highly suggest that you do. Keep those questions coming for the last 15 minutes to facebook.com slash heavier than heaven Halifax and make sure that you like our page, but also facebook.com slash inviting end. Do us a big favor there. Then after we get through that, we will be hearing from Anthrax and their cover of TNT from their cover album Anthems. So we'll finally get to hear what that sounds like. But first, start it off right. Blood Grounds, Inviting End. The song is called Defect here on Heavier Than Heaven.
I think it's time for old Danger Zone to eat a bit of crow because it seems the Grammys had it right on when they picked Anthrax in their cover of TNT for this year's 2014 Grammy nominations for Best Metal Performance. We are back here on Heavier Than Heaven, the last final ten minutes with special guests inviting in. The messages just keep coming in. Man, this is great. Uh, So, we have... Another one from Brent Preeper. This is a good one. I would have asked this if I would have remembered it. Thank you very much, Brent. What's the craziest thing that's happened in a show so far or your favorite moment? Oh. Like one of our shows? Yeah, one of your shows. Mm. I think a guy dislocated his kneecap. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's yeah. a big thing to he dislocate. Had, uh, yeah, he uh, ended up getting taken out in a stretcher. We weren't playing at the time. It was after we had finished. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah. We're not saying that's the best thing. That was one of the crazy yeah, things. Crazy. Yeah, crazy. Yeah, not the best. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that guy definitely got hurt. Pretty crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. But yeah, yeah. I think it happened. Didn't it happen during our set? And they were pulling him out as the as last band was like yeah. crashing out full tilt? Yeah. yeah right. It definitely did. Yeah. Uh, we've had some good mosh pits. Uh, memorable. Like mm. the last show we played, we were playing first. And uh, the first song, when it was just Mark and Gavin playing, the whole band wasn't even started. The crowd was already, already moshing. Mm. Uh, Throwing yeah, beers first, everywhere. That was, that was pretty yeah. memorable, I think. Was, uh, yeah, for, I got, for the I first got sprayed with beer. Yeah, yeah. First band to play that people are already <laughs> going at. It. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. yeah. nice. Yeah. Uh, unless there's any other, uh, Keenan, you remembered another album. Yes, yeah, the uh, re-release of "As the Palace Is Burned" by Lamb of God. Yes, buddy, yeah. that yeah. just came out this year. Great album. Oh, fantastic album. And the re-release sounds so good. Oh my god, it's gorgeous. I know. The drums sound way better. Oh yeah, yeah. everything is just. A whole lot more pure and yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. crisp and just uh, more brutal. Great. If they could even get more brutal, but yeah. <laughs> uh, we have another one from Shan. She wants to know. Uh, of course, we talked about like like lack of metal venues for bands to play at. Uh, wanted to know: Do you find that bands compete for spots to play, or do venues kind of compete? Uh, for letting metal bands play in their establishments, so you find when there if there's competition, is it between uh, bands or is it like establishments? I think it. De- I think it's the organizers. Organizers, really. yeah. yeah. The promoter will kind of be more apt to kind of have a little bit of competition in terms of wanting to book you. Yeah, I, I don't really think that like the seahorse goes out and says, "Okay, we're going to book Doom Machine or we're going to book Last Call of Chernobyl." I think it's yeah, you know, uh, you're you're organizing groups like uh, Josh Hogan's Red Tentacle and yes, and uh, Metalworks. It's like um, it's them who are looking to put off the show. Gotcha. Try and find the bands first, and then the, or the venue first, rather, or whatever, and then it's kind of a kind of a battle to see who you can get if you can get the lineup you want or then kind of who's fighting for that and then position within the show itself I guess okay well I guess that would be uh, I, I mean I guess that would be better it's a good way to kind of um, I, I don't know if like fo- foster I guess, I guess peace I'm just thinking of like other times in music when there have been like really like cutthroat competition between bands to get certain venues and it's kind of I guess it would be a good thing that's going through the organizers as opposed to like odd the onus is on you guys to get here before this other band and stuff like that. Yeah, I don't, I don't actually view it as a competition between bands. Really. That's, that's I mean, good. That's maybe good. a bit when I was younger and I was like, we were just starting out. It, it felt that way, but sure. I know I don't see it that way anymore. It's just like we all work together. We yeah, support each other. Invite you yeah. to shows. It's great. Like the uh, the shows we've gotten invited to have been awesome so far. Nice. Yeah. And normally there's not many like two big shows on the same night at like opposing venues. Normally that doesn't happen too much. Yeah. You know. Right on. Um. Well, while we have a break in questions, we have about five minutes left in the show, and now is the time, inviting end, to uh, let us know what is going on with you. Do you have anything coming up in the future, or is there anywhere that you would like to direct our listeners? Um... Let's start with facebook.com <laughs> slash inviting ends. That is the hub. Yeah, I definitely want to check us out online. Uh, like you like you were saying earlier, we've got our EP on Bandcamp. Yes. Um, Which you can find at facebook.com slash. Yeah, we've got some songs from Reverb Nation. Uh, good, good. We've got a Twitter page. Um, but we are going to be recording next year. Uh, we're, we're working hard on some new material. Okay. And, uh, we've, we're aiming to do a full length. All right, uh, so, yeah. so it's kind of so t- stay posted. It's in a it's in a building phase right now. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. okay, okay, good. But everybody can stay up on you. Facebook, Twitter, Reverb Nation, yeah. uh, your Bandcamp, of course, would be awesome if you could drop these guys a couple of bucks and in exchange for some truly excellent music, local music at that. Yeah. What you got? What yeah, you, we got, you got something for you guys. Yeah. Oh, you got yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. We got you guys some shirts. 
Oh, sweet. Yeah, thanks a lot for having and us. And they're on the show. extra large. You knew I was fat. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. We just grabbed a couple, I guess. So. Yeah. Oh, thanks, yeah, guys. Yeah, we'll have to do that. That is so sweet of you. <laughs> <laughs> but seriously, guys, it's been our pleasure to have you on here. It's always you. it's always great to localize our, uh, I guess, talent initiative, you could say, but uh, to have local voices on here and to kind of s- support you guys as best we can. Let us know any time that you have a show coming up or a new development. We will pimp the crap out of you on our show because we believe in you. We think you guys are awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Definitely. man. Yeah. Absolutely. And, uh, yeah, feel free to drop in anytime. Yeah. CKDU uh, continues on overnight. We have all kinds of stuff coming up, as always, is Where Monsters Dwell, the comic book podcast, coming on at midnight. After that, we have more stuff like the interview show, If Music Could Talk, Deep Threes, it's CKDU's overnight uh, playlist going into tomorrow, Sunday, and then going into the rest of the week. New week! Christmas is coming, fellas. How are you going to celebrate? Or do you guys, do you all celebrate Christmas? Or, or Solstice. Solstice? <laughs> right on. Uh, I don't know. I guess I just call it Christmas. Yeah. I'm not religious at all, but, uh, yeah. you know, hang with the family, give some presents and drink. Virtual Christmas. Yeah. 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 Xmas. Yeah, 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 exactly. Showing yeah. Yeah. Good, good. the friends and family and drinking and laughing at dead trees. It's pretty much, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much just vacation so time for me. Yeah. Do you have any, um, uh, we didn't really like touch on like movies or anything. Do you guys have any holiday movies that you always have to watch? Uh, I mean, Nightmare Before Christmas yeah, goes up there. Yeah, um, very nice. <laughs> <laughs> Nightmare Before Christmas is it's great because it covers two holidays. Uh, Die Hard. Oh, Die! Oh, yeah, the best Christmas nice. movie ever. <laughs> uh, Series. We right. uh, and of course uh, Home Alone. Home Alone's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. Uh, there's <laughs> one. F- there's one for me. I don't know if you guys are familiar with it, but every year my family and I watch Jingle All the Way with Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger. Oh God, yes. Dad. I love Arnold. Yeah, Anything with Arnold. That like Put the, that uh, cookie down. The national now. Uh, Christmas. No, oh, yeah. That's hilarious. Of course. Okay. Yeah, Chevy Chase. Oh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Holy shit. Where's the title? <laughs> <laughs> How could this get any worse? <laughs> um, and I guess while we have you here, I know it's a little hokey to do it live on the air, but, you know, just for future's sake, let's get a uh, We're Inviting End. You're listening to Heavier Than Heaven. Count us in, Mark. <laughs> uh, here, let me give you, let, let me give you the... Uh, the We're inviting, inviting end, and you're listening, listening to Heavier Than Heaven, Heaven on CKDU. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think I could do something with that. <laughs> Guys, thanks thanks once again for, com- for coming on the show. Thank you, everybody, who sent us in questions. We really appreciate your input here. You guys made the show ten times better, thanks to your awesome conversation starters. It would really make me happy if you liked our Facebook page, Heavier Than Heaven Halifax. And it would also make me very happy if you liked Inviting End's Facebook page, if you haven't already. Heavier Than Heaven is coming back next week. We have our sh- uh, our regular show. And then the week after is going to be our Christmas cast, which is not exactly metal exclusive. It's going to be partnered with Drag the Waters for a four-hour Tower of Power Christmas cast extravaganza. It's going to be a great time where we, where we play music that's not heavy metal, and I lose the respect of the listeners because I have crappy, <laughs> crappy taste in music. <laughs> so if you want to lose respect for a fat man in his 20s, listen to CKDU <laughs> on Saturdays, 10 p.m. to midnight. But seriously, guys, listen to us 10 p.m. to midnight every Saturday night. We're going to be coming at you for the next couple of weeks and then into the new year. Listen to Inviting End, invitingend.bandcamp.com, and support them as much as you can. Aside from that, it's time to say... That is it for another edition of Heavier Than Heaven. For myself, Danger Zone, the project who's right behind me. And for inviting Ed. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank Good you pleasure. very much. Thank you, man. Everyone Welcome have a good night. Welcome back anytime. Merry Christmas. Happy Solstice. Happy whatever. Celebrate away. Best of luck in your future endeavors. Guys, we'll be back same time next week. Give us a like on Facebook. And we will like you back. Either, either way, keep it here on CKDU. See you, Space Cowboy. This has been a Heavier Than Heaven production. 
Follow us on Facebook, Heavier Than Heaven Halifax, on Twitter at HTHCKDU, and leave us a message on Gmail, Heavier Than Heaven CKDU at gmail.com. Or send us mail at CKDU 88.1 FM, 6136 University Avenue, Halifax, Nova Scotia, B3H 4J2, Canada. Don't take me off the air! Take me off the air! <laughs>